channel today we're gonna keep going with our bird especially that beak we're gonna see how far we can get on the beak um as to whether we'll be able to do any more of the bird but yeah we'll just see how we get on everything you need is linked down below as usual any questions do let me know and let's just get started okay so i'm gonna start just below the um eye of our bird and we're gonna start off mapping in the dark area so I'm going to start off with my dark sepia, just because I know I'm going to go in with the black. So I'm not worried about adding the warm grey as a base layer, so very light pressure. And I'm just going to map in the shape that I can see at this corner of the beak. So we're going to work from this area down our bird. And it's just, when you're looking at something like this, it looks complicated. It's just about mapping in those shapes that we can see. So all that, that's all I'm doing. I'm looking at the shapes and I'm looking at just mapping in the dark shapes. So we've got like a triangle here at the corner of the beak. So that's what I'm mapping in. Light pressure and I'm just going to lightly fill that in with a dark sepia there. And then I'm just going to bring this dark sepia up and under this eye where it's going to get quite dark under here and we're going to get into like a greenish colour again and then the dark sepia is just going to map in that darker line coming up this part of the beak and then as we come down here we've got a nice sharp edge it's going to be quite a nice dark black so all we're doing with this beak is just breaking it down into little into shapes that are easy to map in easy to follow and that's going to create our nice bird now we are creating a kind of heron um i've been told it's an e egret um it's from unsplash is this reference photo it's all linked below um so yeah, if you're interested in the type of bird we're drawing, and it's, I learned this, we're signified by the fact that our bird is holding its neck in an S shape, which signifies it's part of the heron family, rather than it being a crane. Okay, and I'm just bringing that sepia down here as well. We're going to be blending into some green, but we're just going to bring that sepia down. And this is where we'll be able to map in our black. Now I'm going to do the black last. I want to get these lighter colours in first, but I wanted this mapped in because it's easier then um, to follow. Also got a nice dark line here. So again, in with the dark sepia. I'm not pressing hard. We can work on top of this afterwards that way. And it's just going to come. I brought that down a little bit too low, but it's okay. Under here. And it'll join up down here. Okay, right. So I'm going to go in with my ivory as a base layer now. Okay, so with the ivory, just going to come along here. So this is where we're going to get some greens, some yellows again. We're just going to build up our colours of our beak. It's nice to work with bright colours. It's not often. Also starting filming for Patreon, so for anybody who wants to um, pay to learn. So what's going to happen is when I launch a Patreon, uh, YouTube tutorials will probably go down to once every other month and I will focus more over on Patreon. So I've started filming some tutorials for my Patreon for when it launches so that there's a, a, a backlog of one or two tutorials uh, to work on. So that's exciting. Right. So now that I've done that, I want my dark cadmium yellow. And I'm just going to apply this along the bottom area of this beak. Again, I'm making sure I'm using circular motions on this beak, mainly because it helps get a smoother finish. We want this to look smooth rather than like furry. So circular motions are going to help achieve that. I'm just going to bring that down here. What, just while we work on this corner, bringing it into little section by section so 
in this corner I'm going to use my green gold um, first and this is going to help us get that nice greenish colour blended in nicely as well so green gold you can blend up into that dark sepia area as well because we're going to be going over that with black and I'm blending it down into this uh, dark cadmium area as well just so it all blends smoothly it all looks like it's part of the same bird the same beak right I'm then going to take my olive green yellowish and with the olive green yellowish we're just going to start to bring in this green on this corner and then along the top of this part of the beak that we've just drawn in so and um, yeah and then i'm just going to go back over the top part with the uh, green gold and then that area is now ready for the black to go on top of so we're just coming back underneath our uh, beak i've got the brown ochre and i just want this to line the bottom of this beak Very gentle, very light pressure. I just want a darker brownish yellow along our beak. I didn't want it to be the green because it's not a green colour. It's more of this brownish orange. So I'll just use the brown ochre. Okay, right. And then we can take our black and darken where we've got the dark sepia. Nice sharp pencil because we want these to be nice and sharp edges. And it's quite a small detailed area. Okay. Oh, now we have got a bit more green here. So before I do go any further, I'm just going to take my green gold over the top of this dark sepia. Now I'm not worried about the being dark sepia in here because it'll just add to that depth. Um, but we do need to work our way around this area and then the um, olive green yellowish and I'm going to leave a middle section of that green gold showing okay and then back in with the black and the black is just going to outline this edge here And you can see I'm going in with a hard pressure now with this black because it is black, it is very dark. I'm going to underline this eye. And it is dark under the eye as well. And coming along this bottom part. I'm just blending it into that green. Okay, and then I'm just going to take that uh, olive green yellowish again, just in here. And then I can go back to that black and just blend it out. So I'm blending that black over that green and blend uh, using lighter pressure, tapering my strokes so that it blends into that green nicely. Hopefully you uh, can see that. And then this corner is uh, black, so I'm just going to um come in with the harder pressure now and then i need to uh, get this uh, little part of the beak lined in but i want to use my um kaput mortem first um, actually, no, my burnt sienna, because we've used burnt sienna on the beak. And I'm just going to take the burnt sienna along that line that we drew in earlier. Sorry, I know my hand keeps getting in the way. Trying not to too far, much in the way. So I'm just doing this a few times to bring out that reddish tone that I can see. And that's going to come down here as well. 
and then over the top of that I'm just going to take my dark sepia rather than taking the black take the dark sepia not hard pressure just lightly and that's just going to help give you that depth in there just back in with a dark cadmium yellow I'm just building up that nice bright yellow that we've got going on and I'm just going to once again take that green gold on the top and blend it in okay let's keep moving down our beak right so back to the green gold along this uh, top edge of our beak so I'm just breaking it down into smaller sections to make it easier it looked complicated but if we just break it down into smaller sections we can complete it and then when you complete it and you step back and you, you can look and think oh my gosh look what we've just drawn and it's literally just by breaking it down into sections right we need our dark red again and with the dark red i'm just coming in under here very lightly and we're going to start to bring in that reddish tone that's underneath this black part and it's starting to come redder tone as it blends into that dark part of the beak so just blend that upwards remember it's all just blending nicely together and then i'm going to take my dark cadmium orange very lightly over the top of that dark red and just into this green gold area ever so slightly just to give that smooth blend and then you can go back over the top with the green gold again just making sure it all looks really smooth nice soft blending it's all we're looking for on this beak okay so back to the dark cadmium yellow i'm just going to bring it further down this part of the beak where we're going to work on next just where i've built up the ivory base layer and then I'm taking the cadmium orange along here, making it darker at the bottom and it's staying that yellow colour above. Okay, and then I'm just going to take the um, burnt sienna I'm going to sharpen that you want a really sharp point and we're going to do like we did with the brown ochre and we want to sharpen the edge here so i'm just coming in along this bottom edge blending upwards ever so slightly oh that's going to snap hang on remove that okay blending ever so slightly upwards into that orange so it's very very small strokes it's almost like you're dotting the paper and that's just going to give you that nice red hint and then you can go back over with that cadmium orange if you need to and bring that orange back in underneath there okay i'm also going to take my light yellow ochre and with the light yellow ochre just come in across this top part of the beak and then blending outwards into that cadmium yellow and then I'm taking my burnt sienna and just darkening that centre line again as it comes down into that darker area right I'm just going to take my dark sepia and I just want to darken these little markings they need to come a little higher up than where we have them so i'm just doing this with a dark sepia just these little lines here there we go right i also need to uh we'll start that out as we come back let me just move the page a bit and we'll keep working on our beak right we're getting into a larger section so i'm just going to erase this little bit of graphite and then again ivory as our base layer and i'm just going to cover this section of the beak so again just doing it section by section applying the ivory base layer 
and then I can work on top of that with the colours for our beak. So I'm just going to bring this further down. Remember we don't have to use this whole section but I just want to apply the base layer so that it's down and I can work from there. Okay. Right, so first of all we have a nice dark section coming. Um, actually I think what I'm going to do, let me just move this can we see, can't really see the whole section there, but um, I'm just going to bring this, oops, ivory all the way down this beak. So you want to take your base layer, ivory base layer, and bring it all the way to the bottom of this bottom part of the beak. That way the ivory base layer is down and now all it is uh, for us to do now is just build up the colours and build up this bottom section of the beak. So that takes out the worry of having to come in and build up a base layer. So I'm going to come in first of all with my dark red and we're going to map in this dark middle section here. So again with the dark red, light pressure at first and I'm just going to map in this darker section. So it looks black but under, under that undertone you can kind of see just poking through is this reddish tone which is why I'm using the dark red. And I'm just curving my lines ever so slightly as we come down this section of the beak. And I'm building this section in because it's the darkest section and it also kind of separates this area from this area. So it's just a nice place for us to have a reference point to work from. And that's going to come all the way down. Uh, quite far down the beak actually, it comes quite low down, about down here. And you can see it's light pressure, I'm not pressing hard, just building up that colour. Right, so I'm then going to come in with my dark cadmium yellow and we're going to build up this top section of the beak. And I'm building up this top section before going with the darker colours so that I can blend over the top of these lighter areas with the darks and know that I've got a nice looking smooth beak. And I'm going to bring that dark cadmium yellow all the way down this beak. You can see it's quite a big section, but we're going to work on this. I'm not too worried if it's not as smooth yet. I'm going to build it up the layers, but I'm trying to get it as smooth as I can. Right, so as I come down this uh, beak, first of all, I'm going to take my uh, dark red. Under here. Again, light pressure. I'm not pressing hard yet. We're just slowly building up the colour. All it is slowly building it up and along here. Again, we're getting nice sharp edges where we need to have sharp edges. And then just light pressure. You can see how light it is, you can see the grain of the paper, and that's just going to blend outwards there as well. Okay, I'm then going to take my cadmium orange, again light pressure and I'm going to bring that over the top, so that's going to blend outwards into that cadmium yellow and then over the top of this dark red. Okay, and then I'm going back to my dark cadmium orange. I'm not going to bring it all the way up, but we're just going to start to darken this corner of the beak. Get this nice fiery looking orange colour that's going on. Bring that outward and then back to my dark red. I'm going to press a little harder now and build up 
uh, to really build up that red tone. So I'm just going to come in here, build up that red tone, blend outwards. So when I'm saying blend outwards, remember light pressure, blend it outwards. Okay, and then back to my cadmium orange, and that's just going to blend again into that cadmium yellow. Right, now we do have a darker lined edge going on on our beak. So I'm going to take my uh, dark sepia to do this. And you want this to be really sharp. And you want to make sure that this is a really sharp edge. But we're going to come in with a dark sepia. And we're just going to almost outline this beak. Now I'm going to come in across the top just because it's easier for me. So I'm sorry if you can't see this. Um, but I'm just doing short strokes. You don't need to do it in one long stroke. You can do it in a really short stroke. And just build up that darker edged part to the beak. And you can see I've just gone outside that line ever so slightly there. Let's see if I can correct that later on. And I'm just going to where I've got that dark red so far. Okay, and then... In this middle section of the beak, I'm going to take my Burnt Umber. And with the Burnt Umber, I'm just going to darken this middle section line. Again, hard pressure now, because I really want this to look dark. And it's kind of a double lined area here. Okay, and then in between there, I'm just going to take my uh, warm grey five just to build up that warmer colour that's going on in between there. Okay, getting good, get in there, get in there. So I'm going to take my uh, green gold now along the bottom part of this beak. Remember, we're still just working on this section of our beak. This is the green gold. Very light pressure, just slowly building it up. And then I'm going to take the deep red. And again, light pressure just over that green gold area. It's going to bring another orangey tone into our beak. Just add a bit more interest and variety. And then over the top of that, my cadmium orange. Blend those two areas together. And then I'm going to take my dark cadmium yellow again. So it's just again, as usual, a bit of back and forth, building up those layers. But I'm going back over this area just to get it nice and smooth. So you can see just how smooth this area is compared to here. It looks a bit scruffy at the moment. That's just because we've not got enough layers down. And that's just what we're building up. We're just building up the layers. So back to the green gold. And I'm going to run this green gold along the bottom part of this beak now along this bottom edge not pressing hard just lightly um, and the light yellow ochre over the top and I'm just going to take that light yellow ochre along here as well blend that outwards and then back to the uh, dark cadmium yellow over the top of both of these areas and just really smooth out this section of the beak. Back to my cadmium orange, just where I want a bit of an orange tone on this beak. Like so, okay, get in there. Um, I'm going to take my burnt umber again, just along this section. So I can see that I need to darken this area up a bit more. And I want to bring this darker area a bit higher up. So go back to my dark sepia. So this is areas where it just needs to bring this marking a little higher up. So I'm going to press harder with the dark sepia. And just bring this marking higher up the beak. And the same will go for this side. 
this marking just needs to come a little higher up the beak. It doesn't matter if it's not the same as the reference photo. Going back to that burnt umber, it just needs to be a little higher up. It's just a little bit too low. Remember, every marking on each bird is going to be different. And nobody's going to see our reference photo. Just on that one a bit lower. Okay. And I'm just going to bring a few more markings in here. And then the burnt sienna, just to bring in that reddish tone again. Over the top of this area. Okay, that looks better now. Right. Also just going to take the burnt umber down this middle line of our beak. Blend it downwards. Okay, right, let's keep going on to the bottom half of our beak. So as we come down this bottom half, we have that greenish tone again. So I'm going to start off with the dark cadmium yellow again in this corner but i'm not going to press too hard i'm just going to slowly build up the circular motions and just la build up a slight layer of color and i'm going to apply this along this bottom half light pressure so hold hold your pencil higher up which will give you that nice light pressure and we'll just blend down this beak now remember we do have this darker section to add we will do that um, once we've built up our beak then going in with the green gold, just in this area. So it's like a triangle. So that's all I'm doing. I'm just sort of creating this triangular shape where I can see this green gold, this greenish colour of this beak. You see just this nice little triangle area. We will add some more green as well, but you can see just how adding this green gold has already created that green tinge to our beak. And then you just want to bring that slowly down and round using curved strokes just to create that motion of a curved beak and just slowly blend it outwards into that cadmium um, yellow that we've already got. And I'm just going to bring it further out so it's harder pressure in this triangle, lighter pressure here as we just bring out this green gold. And then I'm going to go over the top again with a cadmium, dark cadmium yellow, circular motions. And then you can take your um, olive green yellowish, light pressure. We don't want this to look as green as over here, but we want this green ever so slightly on our beak. Very light pressure. I'm not pressing hard at all. Okay. And then I'm going to bring that cadmium yellow again, another layer just to darken it up as we're going to bring in those orange tones once more on our beak. Nearly there with the beak now though, so it's taken us a while to build up, but I'd rather take our time and get a really nice beak, because it's a big beak. <laughs> Then going to take the uh, light yellow ochre now, add this as a layer, so it's light layers so that we can just keep building some nice depth to our beak, trying to create that nice orangey yellow tone and th to do this it's just about building up our layers. I'm just applying this across the whole of the beak again. Okay, and then I'm going to take my uh, dark cadmium orange along this bottom part again. So this is where we're just, just going to start to bring this whole beak together. So the dark cadmium orange, blend that outwards. Both ways, we want it to blend into this bottom part of the beak, but we want it to start blending into that part of the beak that we're working on. And then the cadmium orange. Just blending nicely now. 
you can see it's starting to really build up the tone on our beak okay so i'm just going to bring this cadmium orange up here as well all along this bottom of the beak so it's almost like i'm outlining the bottom edge of this beak with the cadmium orange i do love how vibrant this beak is it's not often you get to use vibrant colors and i'm bringing this cadmium orange up here very light pressure i'm not pressing hard remember we've got to bring some darker tones in yet so okay and then i'm going to take my um deep red and again just light pressure as i build up these reddish tones on this beak okay I'm then going to take my burnt sienna so I'm going to start building up this darker section of the beak so the burnt sienna using the sharp edge and again just going to blend it so as I say I'm blending I'm just using a lighter pressure at the end so that it blends nicely into these colours that we've already got laid down and i've got a sharp edge because i want this sharper edge just ever so slightly and then i can just blend very gently upwards onto that top section of the beak so i'm creating a harsh harsh edge like so and then I'm just gently blending upwards. So you're getting that harsher edge, but it's also blending. And then obviously we're blending it downwards. And this is all just with the burnt sienna. Bring that all the way down. And I'm going to use this burnt sienna right on this section. See just how dark it's going to go. Really bring those tones to life on our beak. Okay, right. I'm also just going to take my dark sepia again. Like before, you want to start outlining the bottom edge of this beak. So I'm just very slowly, short pencil strokes, just creating that darker outline that is going on on the bottom half of this beak. And I'm going to bring it all the way up to where we start to see some of that those feathers showing. So about halfway up this long edge. Okay, right. Uh, back to my cadmium orange. Just going to blend that dark uh, that burnt sienna into our beak here. Remember, we're going to get darker yet. It's going to get a little bit darker, so I'm going to take my, um, am I going to do my burnt sienna? I'm going to take the burnt umber first. So just exactly like we just did with the burnt sienna, doing it with the burnt umber. Blending it outwards. And remember, we've not blended any of the lighter colours in yet. We're just building up this darker edge. Yeah, I'm happy with this. I'm just making sure it was the right colour to use. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I'm blending both ways, so to the top of the beak and to the bottom part of this beak. Remember, we've kind of done it in two sections. So the top section, the bottom section. And then blending it down here. Okay, and then you can take your burnt sienna, uh, not burnt sienna, sorry, dark sepia. And again, I'm pressing hard now and I'm just going to start to really darken those areas on this part of the beak that's dark. Blending it nicely into those areas. Maybe a bit darker here. It comes down. And then just into a bit more of a burnt sienna tone there. Okay. I'm then going to take my dark red over the top 
and again just going to blend outwards so I'm getting that reddish tone blending into that beak just on this bottom half of the beak uh, take my is this the the dark cadmium orange just going to darken this area where it can be darker and I'm just going to bring it along this bottom edge as well a little bit darker in here okay and then I'm going to take my green gold and I'm going to go over the top with the green gold I'm not pressing hard just glazing that colour so when I say glazing it's just very lightly going over the top and then I can take my dark cadmium uh, yellow on this top half to blend so pressing harder now I'm just going to blend this area together and then on the bottom half I'm going to take my light yellow ochre and blend this bottom half okay and I think we have our beak okay I'm just going to take the burnt sienna and I'm just going to sort out this section of the eye so this is just where we're kind of doing a bit of tidying up on our beak so this needs to come down here a bit more doing those final details but just making sure it's right um the dark cadmium yellow And then I'm just going to take the brown ochre, it's got a nice sharp point and it's just going to detail some of these darker lines coming down here. And along this bit of the beak. Okay, happier there. Um, I'm just going to take that dark red, again just under this part of the beak blend it outwards into the uh, dark cadmium uh, into the cadmium orange sorry and then that'll blend down into that yellow area yeah that looks better that's giving that a bit more depth and a bit more shadow okay so now we can do some of the feathers so again we'll just start from our um beak We've got a darker section here, so I'm coming in with a dark sepia first, light pressure. And I'm just going to build up that dark little feather that's going on here. And then I can just, once I've mapped that shape in, you can come in, harder pressure. And that's that little dark section built up. Okay, so I'm just going to take my uh, putty eraser and just ever so gently lift some of that graphite. See if we can get these bottom feathers done. So I'm going to take my warm grey one as a base layer and I'm going to bring it up to this corner and I know that I'm going to work sort of my way up there. So I'm just going to bring that warm grey one as a base layer following the direction that those feathers are going in. So they're kind of curling downwards. And I'm just going to build up this whole base layer and then we can come in with our other pencils and build up the details that we need. So it's a bit shorter, the feathers are shorter closer to this dark section and get a slightly longer the further away we're going down this uh, beak. Just move my bit of paper because I'm getting closer to the edge and not resting on it. Oh, right, so I've got my base layer down. I'm going to go over the top of that with my white, uh, no, with my ivory, very lightly, just to build up that creamy colour we're going on. Okay. So I'm going to take my warm grey 4 and I'm going to start off by just 
oh, sharpening it first. Okay, so with the warm grey four, I'm going to start at this end where I can see it's darker, and I'm just going to build up the shadow on the top, and I can start to see it's bringing in individual feathers. So I'm just going to start building up the little shadows. Don't worry if they're not accurate. You just want to build up little shadows that are going in between these clumps of feathers. So again, yes, we're drawing feathers, but we're building clumps. That's all we're doing. We're just building up little clumps and a darker shadow along the top of this beak. And then as I come further down, I'm going to take my warm grey free. It's not as dark. It's a bit darker towards the back. We've got the head and the beak creating shadow. So I'm going to use my warm grey free now as I come a bit further down, building up some tone, building up that depth. And again, my pencil strokes are going in the direction that those feathers are going in. Now this area doesn't need to be too detailed. We're not going to build up loads of detail. We're going to also use the slice tool later on to bring in a little definition. Just going to take my warm grey two. And I'm going to use the warm grey too, just to help blend. So harder pressure over the top. You can see I'm starting to really get some definition in these feathers, especially down here. And that's what we're looking for. So back to the warm grey four. And I'm just going to build up some individual lines now. So these are dark shadows and I'm just looking where those shadows are. And I'm just following the shadows and building up the highlights are sort of in between these shadows so I've built up a little shadow then you've got a highlight and that's going to create the detail that we're looking for that's all I'm doing and I'm not pressing hard with the warm grey for light pressure a few little feathers going over the tops and then these feathers are coming down Okay, and I'm just going to keep this going. I'm not worried too much about detail on this section of our bird. Just want it to start building up the depth. That's all I'm looking at doing is just building up the depth. Okay, and then I'm going to take my uh, warm grey one over the top. Okay, and then the dark C. No, I'm going to take a one grey five over that dark sepia and just blend it outwards so that it starts to get blended into those feathers. And it's also along the edges of these feathers along here. So everything blends together, and then you can take the one grey one again over the top. So you can see we're just really starting to build up that definition. Okay, now we do have a quite sharp edge, so I'm just going to take my warm grey three and I'm going to bring that along the bottom here. I want that beak to look like it is above these feathers. So I'm taking that warm grey three and then I'm going to take my burnt sienna along the bottom edge of this beak nice and sharp you can see how, just how sharp it is i'm creating that nice sharp edge to the beak remember you can use short strokes you don't need to do it in one long stroke just build it up slowly that's all we need to do and you can repeat that process several times till you get a dark line of the burnt sienna Sorry, I know that my shadow of my hand is there, but hopefully you can see that. You can see I've now got a nice sharp edge to those um, feathers. And then I'm going back to my warm grey two, and I'm just going to come over the top. The more layers I've got here, the more I can use my slice tool. I'm going to use this in the next part though, once we've really started to build, uh, build up our bird. So a lot of detail to come yet, which is exciting. But I think we're going to leave this here because I don't want to start our bird. We've finished our beak. 
um, let me zoom you out and you can see. So here's our bird so far. We finished the beak and we've started the uh, feathers. I nearly said fur. <laughs> we started the feathers. So in our next part, we're going to make a start on the head and the white feathers. And we'll just see how far we get. Um, we'll take our time with our bird. There's quite a bit of detail within the feathers. And yeah, we'll just take it nice and steady like we did with the beak. So if you've got any questions, let me know down below. Um, and I will see you all in the next part. Don't forget to subscribe if you're not already. Like this video, it really helps me out. And I'll see you all soon. Bye, everybody.